there was nothing that would give people the real tools that they could go and, and, and say, you know what? Judaism, the Torah lives on, on an ideal. We live here. All those guidelines that we talk about, they were meant to bridge between here and here. It doesn't mean that those guidelines are the way. This is the way. Whatever you do to get here is the way. You understand? Those guidelines, they were ideas. The problem with most of those guidelines is this. How many times you go to a synagogue and you hear the name Nachmiadis or Rashi or Rashi Maimonides or Ramban? Every time you go to a synagogue, you hear those names, right? And every time you hear any kind of guideline or law, you're going to hear those names too. Oh, because the Torah says that, and according to this guy, that's what we do. How many people heard that before? <laughs> All right? the time. Yeah. What those people have in common? What all those people that I'm telling you that made those guidelines have in common? What aspect? What aspect? I mean, you're then Jewish, what they have in common? Then you know, Jewish, God, I mean, God, God. Yes. scholars, okay. maybe scholars. I don't scholars, know. Scholars, okay. The huh? The old man, <laughs> okay. Okay, but that doesn't really define why their opinions are the way the opinions are. You know what opinions are made of? Sociology. Go to your oh, environment, right? You know what? Like, in my opinion, tomorrow will be a good day, right? What those people have in common is that they all are from the same period. All of them are from the medieval period. Medieval period was a long time ago. I don't know if they told you. <laughs> and I think that from that time to today, there were people with different ideas, but, you know, and there were ideas before that period, too. Why do we pick all those people from those times? And this is, a, this is one of the most important sociological facts that you need to understand in Judaism. The reason why we did that is because the medieval period was the worst time in history to be a Jew. There was no time in history, including the Holocaust, that was so bad to be a Jew as the medieval period. Because in the Holocaust, people would come, if you get caught, they kill you, it's over. It's not, it's, not, it's, not, it's not the end of the world. Worse is when you live in a village and you know that some, that village is going to be piled, somebody's going to get raped, and somebody's going to be getting killed, and that's going to happen about every single day or every single week or every single month where you live, and you're going to have to get used to that. That's so much worse than, you know, just just living on a, on a puff. And why did that happen? Because when you study the history of the world, we have a, 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 a time that was called before the medieval period. Do you know the name of the period before the medieval period? What was called? Um. Dark Ages. Right? You know why they call the Dark Ages? It's not a good marketing for Christianity why they call the Dark Ages, actually, by the way. No learning. Huh? No learning. No learning, yeah, but they learned one thing. Dark Ages was defined by Southern Europe invading every single country in Europe going north to convert them to Christianity. That's what happened during the Dark Ages. So when you see the movies about the Vikings coming of violence because they're bad, no, they were just trying to maintain their way of life. And those people were coming, trying to invite, invade their country, and they are defending themselves. In the end, the Vikings lost, and they're Christians today. But they fought, and they tried to, they, 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 they tried to maintain their way of life. They're, they're, whatever pagan or hidden way of life, was taken away from them, not through God, but through power. That's, that's the, the only way. I, I think that what we see here is very unusual. Because most of the people, probably including all your families, when they became Christians, they didn't choose to become Christians. They were forced to adopt a religion either by a ruler or by a state. 
that's how it goes. Like in Mexico, and the way the, the, the story is told, like I went to Mexico. In Mexico, you go to, 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 to there is this huge church in Mexico City called uh, 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 Nuestra Señora de Guadalupe, right? That's the, the big cathedral, it's huge. Why they build there? Because they said that there was um, this chieftain that he came to this priest and said, I saw this virgin and she appeared to me. She appeared to me and she and, 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 and she wants us something from us. And the priest said, no, she didn't. And he insisted so much that one day the virgin appeared to him and to her and said, oh, that's a miracle. And his entire tribe converted and all Mexican became Christian and so on. I don't think it happened like that, you understand? <laughs> <laughs> to be very sincere, I don't think that happened like that. You know, like let's say all those Chabad stories didn't happen now, they, they tell you they happened. That they also didn't happen there. Why? <laughs> because after that, he lost his power. He became nothing, but he was alive. So I mean, it, lo it, lo it, looks, it looks like there was, there was some kind of trade in there that has nothing to do with, with, with the virgin appearing there. And that's how it happened in Europe. That's how it happened in, in most of the places where they invade. Either you convert or you die. That's what happened in the Inquisition. Most people think that the Inquisition was like the Holocaust. You know how long, how many years the Inquisition lasted? Rabbi, do you know how many years? Long, long time, <laughs> long time, more. Decades. Hundreds of years. Hundreds of years of Inquisition. The Inquisition was not officially over, I think, until the 1700s. That's a lot of time. And, and during the 1700s, they would go to a small village where the people have converted 150 years ago and say, oh, he looks a little bit Jewish. Let's burn his house. Or, the whole thing is that the, there was no law that protected the Jews. If a, if a Gentile killed a Jew, the Jews would go running and saying, you know, somebody killed one of my members of my family, and there were no keys on doors or whatever. So the Cossacks coming in and different with pogroms, they were a daily event. Exactly. It was, was very, very bad. But when I'm talking about, let's go back to the medieval period, to the Dark Ages. So in the Dark Ages, it was very, very bad to be a Jew. Why? Because after after the Christians were well, on their way to the top of Europe, there was the official end of Dark Ages and the beginning of the medieval period. What happened in the medieval period? You have an entire continent where everybody is a Christian, with the exception of the people that kill God. That must be a very well, the welcoming wagon must be very nice when you move to a town. Like you say, oh, you know, my family kill your God, you know, it's nice meeting you, you know. <laughs> and, 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 and Jews being accused of diocide, they were a very useful tool for the two powers that existed in the medieval period. Which, which powers existed in the medieval period, you guys know? The own the two ruler, ruling powers? The church and the king, the monarchy and, and, and the church. So usually, when you when you were in the medieval period, each one of them used the Jews for different things, according to their interest, according to their.